157. No, you guys aren't buying it. Um, so overall, you know, I, I thought we had a great spring. I thought today was phenomenal. Um, I was a little worried about the weather, um, although I would have came in here and said it was great wet ball work for us, but it cleared up. It was awesome all week long, and then we had the rain this morning. I think we would have had a lot more people in there um, if the rain didn't scare some people off. Um, but it was great work in the stadium, Beaver Stadium, in front of fans, on TV, in a competitive environment. I thought the team was broken up um, to be competitive, and I thought it really was. So there's a lot of value in that. Um, offensively, it was really good uh, to see some young guys step up. Um, I thought Omari really stepped up, and we need a third wide out to step up. So that was exciting to see him make some plays out there. I thought, you know, Caden Saunders did some things, and Ivy did some things, Malik McLean did some things. So we need that. Uh, defensively, I thought Deny was unblockable out there. You know, we're, I think, you know, he's going to have a big year for us. I, I couldn't be more excited about him. I thought KJ Winston was flying all over the field, 21. Um, so we're just we're just back into a kind of a different place from a depth perspective, probably pre-COVID. Um, that's been valuable. We still got some guys coming in that we're excited about, so that'll be great. A um, couple other things, you know, punting. We got to be better uh, in our punting. We're basically punting on air with no rush, nothing. We should have been killing the ball. So that's something we really got to work on. You know, between now and West Virginia. Uh, some things we got to clean up. You know, we had a penalty after a touchdown. I should be celebrating and telling a kid how wonderful he is. Instead, he's doing 50 up downs on the sideline on the Big Ten Network. Uh, not not necessarily what I what I want to be doing. Um, overall, I thought it was I thought it was darn good. So there there are my notes. Um, from everything I saw today and my conversations with Andy Muttonen just a minute ago, it looked like we came out of today healthy as well. I think you guys saw there were some guys that weren't dressed. Uh, we anticipate all those guys being back. Um, just some bumps and bruises and, um, you know, things like that. We, we expect all those guys to be back and, and ready to go. Uh, they, just, they just weren't ready to go this spring. So open up the questions. James, uh, speaking of Omari, where is he in making that transition from playing a bunch of different positions uh, in high school? And with respect to the work he had to do with Chuck, how important is it to get that, that sort of thing out of the way now, kind of learn a lesson for a young guy at this point? Yeah, he kind of you know showed up and was in some ways like a track guy, you know, and, and now he's done a really good job in the weight room. Uh, he's strong and he's physical and he's getting more and more confident day by day. Um, as you guys know, we've talked about it a, a lot. We need somebody to step up in that third wide receiver role. Um, about the last week and a half, we moved him into that spot. And um, obviously today was, was something to build on. There, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, he's got all the tools. It's, it's we got to grind through it and continue to get him good at his craft. Because to your point, you know, mainly played quarterback in high school and, uh, was was mainly like an athletic quarterback, but uh, but he's exciting. We have the talent in the room currently in the room. Uh, we just we just got to grind through it, and we can't throw enough. You know, our our quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, we cannot throw enough all summer. And I do think you know, with having a weight room now that we didn't have last year, having Haluba wide open. Uh, all summer, no matter what the weather is, to be able to throw is going to be really valuable for us. Coach, over to your right, I guess. Yeah, left. Um, left. Sure. <laughs> um, looking at what, everything you've seen over the 15 practices so far, are there any positions you feel like you need to attack during the spring portal window? And how will that, if at all, change the way you guys operate with the evaluation period as well? Yeah, I, I think, you know, like I mentioned, we, we would, I, I think we're in a good place right now. But I, I, I think we need some more depth and more competition at D-tackle. I think we um, need some more depth and competition at wide receiver because I do think we could get by West Virginia 
or by game four or game five, I think we could have six guys that we feel good about, but it's not competitive. Right now, we're, we're trying to figure out who the third is, although a guy stepped up today. Um, I, I want, I want to, there to be legitimate competition at, at every position. Um, and then uh, besides that, we won't turn down a great player at any position, at any position. So, um, you know, we'll, you know, the coaches were talking about the phones are buzzing. It's, it's all over the place right now. It's crazy. I addressed it with our team in the locker room afterwards. Um, but, but those two positions specifically, and then a great difference maker at any position. So Golden singing the national anthem, that was a pretty cool thing. How did that come about? And what are just some of your thoughts on what he can do uh, with the pipes? Because that's a pretty cool, uh, I guess, talent that he has in addition to football. So you're asking me what he can do with the pipes? Uh, yeah, well, it's out of my area of expertise, <laughs> brother. That, that's out. N not nothing, nothing. Um, you know, as, as you guys know, our, our guys are more than just football players. They have other talents. They have other skills and interests and hobbies. As you guys also know, we do kind of that deal. I think you guys, I think we've talked about it before, where if you're a new person on our team, staff or player, you have to get up and dance and sing. Everybody. Uh, Hunter Norzad has talked about that if he would have known he had to do that, he would not have come to Penn State. Like extreme uh, anxiety about getting up in, in front of the group. Um, but it's been something that's been really fun. And that's how kind of we identified, you know, Golden and his talents. And he likes to do it, you know. So a lot of times when the, the new person up there stinks, the room will start chanting for somebody good to go up, and Gold's not afraid to go up. Uh, he's done some things on campus as well, um, you know. So we we thought it'd be cool, and it, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that he did a good job with it. Talented dude. James uh, Drew had the nifty little sidearm pass that you probably hadn't seen yet. Everybody's kind of falling in love with that on social media. Yeah, I saw. I was standing right behind him, yeah. right like this. Yeah. Uh, he also had the kind of little laser on the 19-yarder to a mark. What, what are some things that he can do just in, in terms of his physical skills to make a play, even if maybe it doesn't necessarily look like it's there? And how do you balance that with him needing a little bit more consistency? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I was talking about earlier when I said we can't throw enough. We need more wide outs, um, you know, to, to compete at a high level. And I'm not talking about even from the outside. I'm just talking about – we need six guys that we feel like we can win in the Big Ten with. Um, and I think we have six guys on our current roster that can do it, but they gotta, they got to step up. So they can't throw enough, whether it's on air, you know, whether it's seven-on-seven seven against the defense that they're doing on their own. They just can't throw enough to build that consistency and that chemistry, um, you know, in a lot of ways like, like Sean and Jahan had a couple years ago. There's, they got to build that chemistry, and he's got to build it with multiple guys. And between our tight ends and wide receivers, you know, we can be we could be, I think, you know, pretty effective. I will also say this: I keep bringing up that third wide receiver. They're not just competing with wide receivers because, just like last year, if our second best tight end is better than our third wide receiver, then we're going to be in more 12 personnel. Although we'd like to be an 11 personnel team if we could. But we're going to play to our strengths. And if our tight end room is our strength, then those guys will be on the field. Ty Howell will be happy. And Marcus Higgins will be sad. But the fans will be happy because I'll say the second tight end is like an H-back, which you could also call a. Too bad he's not here today. Neil. Anyway, you, you, um, before spring practice began, you expressed a concern about the leadership on this team. Where do you see it coming from now that you're through spring practice, and can the running backs be a part of that? Yes. Um, I, I think what I've, I have said is our leadership will be different this year. We just had veteran, strong leaders that had been around forever. You know, we had guys that had been multiple-year captains. So it's obviously something that we need to be aware of. 
but it's going to be different than it was last year. So instead of there being four to six really strong voices in the locker room, there may be 12 to 16 that aren't as strong as those four to six, but still has the same impact kind of spread out. Um, we did name three captains today, and we will, we will um, wait till we get through training camp and then possibly add three more on offense, defense, and special teams. But it gives us really good um, understanding of who the team sees as leaders right now going into the summer and lean on them and still leave it open to add another offense, defense, or special teams. I was just going to like stop after that, and I knew everybody would be like, who, who? Yes, you're right. I know. I was planning on saying it. Uh, Keaton Ellis on defense, Olu Fashanu uh, on offense, and Dom on special teams. Dom DeLuca. Uh, James, sometimes you go way all the way in the back. Hi, Ben. Hey. Um, you can go into Did the summer. Did you move back, Ben, or are you just here for the weekend? Uh, I'm just here for the weekend. But if you're ever out in Minnesota, you can stay at my house. Um, I appreciate the offer, but no. <laughs> That's nice, but fair enough. Um, sometimes you go into the summer with a team that feels prepackaged in the sense that you know what you've got at a lot of positions and you've got answers to things. Sometimes you go into the summer and you feel like you have a lot of talent, but you have to grow into it. How are those different in terms of the next couple months? And when you have a team that you feel like has talent, but maybe has to grow into it, how do you approach that? Yeah, I just, I think I, I don't want to be repetitive, but. I think I may have said this to you guys. I know I talked to the team about it. We just, the coaches and the players, we have to be very intentional about what we do between now and West Virginia. They got to have a personal plan. What do I need to get better at? What do I do well? What do I need to work on to be a more complete player? Monday and Tuesday, all day, the players will be meeting with their position coaches. They will get feedback from their position coaches. The coaches will get feedback from the players. Um, we have them fill out a document beforehand to come in answering some questions. There are some questions for the position coach um, to discuss with them. So they get really good feedback from their position coach. The strength coaches are all broken down. They have a position on offense and defense. The strength coaches will do, a same, do the same thing. They'll break down where they're at, where they need to focus, what they need to work on and develop a plan. And then as you guys know, one of my favorite things to do and one of the things that I dislike to do is I have to meet with every single player on the team. There's a ton of value in it, um, but it's a grind. So whatever our number is on the roster right now, I'll meet with every single one of those players, review the document from the strength staff, review a document from the academic staff, the training staff, their position coach, so they understand kind of holistically where they're at. And then I give them specific feedback as well. Um, and then I also get feedback on the staff. What do they think about their position coach? What do they think about the coordinator? What do they think about the strength staff? What do they think about that feedback is important? And I kind of tally it all up. You know, who's your favorite staff member and why? It's, there's a ton of information that we're able to get that is a part of my evaluation process, not just for the players, but for the staff. So um, that'll be a grind, but I think that's, that's what we're gonna have to do. We just have to be very intentional as coaches and as players, as individual positions, as side of the ball, and, and grind on this stuff. We gotta go through the tape from spring, make all the cut-ups, so when we get off the road from spring recruiting, we'll go through the cut-ups from spring ball, We'll start to come up with what is our identity going to be now on offense, defense, and special teams based on what we did well this spring. Um, and then obviously right now the analysts and GAs on Monday will start working on breaking down our first four opponents as well. So there's a ton of work uh, to be done. All right. Uh, oh, right here. All right. The way you structured your, your name, sir, and where you're oh, from? Oh, sorry. Brandon Walker, Nittany Sports now. You probably never. You've never seen me before, probably. Brandon, welcome to Happy Valley. Thank you, sir. All right. The way you structured the team. What's your favorite uh, Thanksgiving meal? Uh, you a turkey? You a ham guy? Turkey. 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 What's your sides? 
Mashed potato or green beans? Mashed potatoes and green beans. Yes. Interesting. Okay, this was the real topic. Um, um, cranberry sauce, fresh or out of the can, it goes, it goes. Always boom. fresh, always fresh. Who makes it, mom, aunt, or grandma, or wife? Well, well aunt, I wish I was married. Okay. That's a whole nother subject. But okay. Okay, uh, sorry. Do you remember your question? The whole idea right. is to distract no, no, you okay. from your actual question. Oh, no, question. no, no, you're, you're good. Um, the way you structured the teams, the blue and the white team, I've noted it was like freshmen and the new guys versus the veterans and the stars. Is it by baptism by fire for the freshmen and new guys, or you're just trying to build that chemistry yeah, and competition? I disagree with you. That's how I used to do it. It used to be kind of like the starters and the two deep versus everybody else. And this this week, it uh, this this year it wasn't that way. I tried to mix it up. I mean, you look. Um, I look at deny Dennis Daniels as a starter. He was on the other team. Um, I can I can use a ton of examples. Uh, it, it probably doesn't look that way when you have certain positions. A lot of you guys probably focused on the running backs. Well, when you got Nick and Katron on one side, and then we don't have another scholarship back right now, but three guys that we love and have done a nice job for us, the positions that we have a legitimate three deep, we were good. Um, so I, I didn't look at it that way. I thought we broke the team up in a way that I thought it was going to be really competitive. You look at our safeties, it's two really good safeties on the blue, two really good safeties on the white. You look at the defensive ends, two really good DNs on the blue, two really good DNs on the white. Our offensive line, we've never had two offensive lines like that, at least since I've been here. So this year, it was not. In years past, it was typically ones and twos versus everybody else. Go in the stadium, hopefully put up big numbers. Everybody's excited. Offense had 7,000 yards and scored 90 points. But this was more about making it as competitive as we possibly can. But some positions made it difficult to do that. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you guys. Won't see you for a while. Chris, when's the next time we'll be together? Maybe June. June? Maybe June or June? Maybe June. Maybe June.